Hello! Take a look at what we have on today's project. Actually, be this week's project, huh? Uh, doing the restoration work. So, uh, a, a fella got this, bought this, and he sent it to me to make sure it was all operational and get it running, get the right pulleys on it, and everything like that. And it doesn't have the counterweight, so we have to figure out the counterweight. But set it all up so he can run it in his fireplace <clears throat> for hearth cooking. Now you know this this is a spit jack, and it's this one here is from the 1700s, I do believe. Now let's take this handle off it here, and you, here's the flyer. So you can see this this is a uh, this is bent. This shaft here is is bent, and one of these are off a little bit. So we have a little bit of uh, corrections to make there. <clears throat> okay. You can see it there. But I wanted you to see, look at the beautiful engraving on it. This is what I want you to see. Isn't it beautiful? Beautiful piece. And uh, <clears throat> here, we're going to take one picture with it all together. But see, put the flyer on. I call this the flyer. And then the hand crank to do it. But here we are. Let's see if we can get a good shot of this, huh? Get the yeah. Hopefully there's something good there, huh? Yeah. <clears throat> so it has beautiful engraving on it. It has the maker's name on it down here. There. And I think it says West Hampton. There. Beautiful engraving. <clears throat> so anyway, as you can saw, saw, there's a few little things that have to be done to this thing to bring it up to working condition. Um, but this is a really, it's in really good shape. All the gears are here, all the teeth are there. It's in really good shape. Uh, and a beautiful engraving. All, everything about it is really, really beautiful. Let me, let me turn the sideways. Look, you want to see the rest of it, okay? <clears throat> so, there. Can you see that? Okay. And look at how this one, look at that long shaft it has. So this one was mounted on a wooden mantle, let's say, a big, a big wooden mantle, and a hole was drilled through the mantle so this could go back into the fire chamber and the pulley was on this end. All right, Very, you don't see it, usually you see the pulley right here. They're on a metal stand that, that stands it off away from the wall a little bit and allows the pulley to be right here. And when we get done, that's the way this is going to be uh, operated. Okay, because like I said, the, the, the new owner, he's going to use this in his hearth. But so there you can see the back of it. Let's just turn it around. Keep turning it. Okay, so nice old uh, brackets here, but that's not how we're going to mount it. So we're going to be making new brackets for that. Uh, one of the things that I noticed is I can't get the, there should be a ratcheting mechanism in here for the spin and it works only part time. Uh, when I first took it, out, took it out of the box it didn't work at all. Uh, so we're gonna, it's, it's back in, it's back in here. It's where this gear is and where this, these two meet up. So it's just a little cog wheel. A little thing. So. We're going to open this up. Let's take a look at this. We'll open this up together. And then I'm sure all these little corrections can be made without uh, any problem. We're going, to, we're going to get this thing all tuned up and running. And then you're going to get to see it running. Okay, so we'll set these guys aside over here. Now also, one of the, I have this on this nice paper here. Uh, I'll be putting all the pieces in... in, in place and marking them as I go. So let's let's take this apart. Let's see. It's really not as not as complicated as you'd think right off the bat. Okay? So it's held together the front plate to the back plate. Now you may see me writing stuff down here. So this is the bottom the bottom nut. Okay, here's the bottom nut right there. Here's the top nut. See, they just come off like that. Fair enough. OK. 
Okay, and now we'll take the front plate right off. This should come off. Have to hold it so the other, everything doesn't go everywhere, right? Here it comes. Here it comes. Easy. So we've taken the front plate right off. And here we are. I'm just going to kick that back right now. Because this guy's just floating, sitting here now. Okay, you can see him. He's uh, the gears. We're going to clean that all up. It'll look real pretty when we get done and work real well. So there's the top gear. Real quickly, you want to see the back side of the. There's the front plate. Let's look at the back side. See how this is. The worm screw is mounted on here like that. And I think this is really interesting that this was turned. You see, this piece was turned and a tech put on here. How fantastic is that? You can even see the lines where, the, see, this piece was turned as well. They were turned, and then it's like a, a press fit right in there. We'll clean that up. We'll, we'll get a look. We may, we may end up seeing little dots where they center punch to squeeze it tight on there. Sometimes is the case. So, there's the back of it. Yeah, I hope. It's all understandable to you. So we're going to put that right here. <clears throat> all right, now, this post is mounted through solid. We don't need to touch that post. And this post hopefully is the same. Yes, it's the same way. So we don't have to deal with that. But here, here's where, here's where we want to see. I'm so anxious to see this. We're going to, I'm going to pull that shaft right out of there all the way. There's the back plate. Now we're going to set the back plate aside. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, look at this beautiful spindle. Now the rope wraps around here holding the weight and the weight is what makes the, the energy it creates the strength of the energy for the whole operation to work and for this thing to spin and turn a, uh, a rotisserie. Okay, now, oh, oh, here it comes right apart. It comes apart. I'm just pulling it out, pulling it out, pulling it out. Oh, and there it is. Oh, there we go. Let's take a look at both of those real quick. Do you see that? There's the ratchet gears I was talking to you about. The ratchets and here is the, the little ratcheting mechanism so it's just a little see it's I don't know if you can see that or not it's a little bit cockeyed and it needs to be more in, in the right plane we'll clean this all up okay so there's you, all your teeth all in good shape there's the shaft look at the shaft closely look at how it's, it's forged down here and then the square for the for the pulley to be on there and a place for the nut. Okay, so we can see how that a little tiny spring here. We'll clean that guy all up and get him working, right? And then if we look at this side, so that is just on there. Here is the pulley. But but I didn't see this right off the bat. There, I see the just think, that rope there, when I pull that out of there. It comes through here and then it'll wind around. So that rope that I'm handling there is from the 1700s. So all this needs to be cleaned up. Now, so here's the thing. Uh, get that rope in there. I'm going to clean this all up so that it's working right, but we're not going to take away the patina age, right? We want this still to look there is restoration and there's preservation and restoration will make it brand new like all back to the way it came from the factory originally or the shop that made it right and preservation is to maintain its age in exactly the way we're going to do something in between them both right we want to preserve its 1700s look its antique look the the age that you know you can't buy that it just took time to get there but we do want it to be completely operational and working good so we're going to find this 
work, walk this fine line of between uh, restoration and preservation. So one of the things, and I can see somebody did this once. I'm going to set that right there. Safe and sound. When we get to this plate, it's very nice. Someone has buffed it, I believe. And we have to be very careful because of that beautiful engraving. I'm going to bring this up. Hopefully you can see the beautiful engraving that's on this. It's hard to see, isn't it? But the whole thing's engraved beautifully. Right? So we don't, we don't, we're not going to hit this with a buffer at all. We may use some polish, but we don't want to lose any of that brass, work our way down into any of that uh, engraving, right? We want to keep that perfect. So there we are, we have it apart. It's all in pieces here on the table. And now it's my job to straighten anything that's bent and crooked. I'm seeing this right here, this is the crank handle. And look at that, it has a little bit of a, there's a bend here. There's another thing here that I have to work on. We'll see what, hap what happens. But over the years, this comes on and off, right? And it's become very sloppy in here. So we'll have to do something about that. I don't know, I don't know yet what. But, uh, yeah, so we're going to clean this guy up. Uh, see, I love this patina that's on here. Oh, gosh, we wouldn't want to lose that at all. Right? That's beautiful. Even though it'll be covered with the rope, the owner and myself will know it's there. And this be beautiful. And this guy here, where's he at here? One of these is, well, no, there he is. One of these is flopping all around here. We're going to get that fixed up. So, I'm going to do a little bit of work on these things. And let's watch it run. Isn't that beautiful? So, flip this guy over. Now, if, see, this is held on these two pillars that hold the, the worm screw. Okay, the worm gear. They're held in place by these two pieces that are attached to the front plate. Luckily enough for us. Now, let's, let's see. This is a hold, so we got to be careful. It's really tricky. But if we can, if we can loosen this screw, I'll be able to take that off and then I'll be able to get to that. See how it's bent? Oh boy, there's even a little crack in it. So we have to be so very careful. Right? We have to be so very careful. But that's okay. We can do it. So let's see. I have to be... It's starting to move. There it is. It moved. It's, it, it's moving. Oh, good, 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 good. You never know about these things. You never know about these things. Oh, how nice is that? Good, so. Oh, good. So. Oh, how sweet. Yep. Oh, great. Look at there. Look at the fine work on this. So we're going to clean that up. But we I like to keep that brown, right? We're going to clean that up. But there, yeah, there's an ever so small crack right there. We're gonna straighten that guy out, right? And then we'll put him back together. We'll clean up all this, get the gooky stuff off, but we won't touch the patina. Okay, now here's the drum. And there, there is the, the leftover rope. From the uh, from the 18th century, you figure. Oh, old, old, old rope. Here's where it came through, and this is where. Now I'm going to be replacing it with some hemp rope to try to be authentic as possible. Now I have to take that out of there. I just I hate to do that because it's been there since the 1700s. But it's time for me to get that out of there. Just push it right out there a little bit. Ease it, ease it, ease it. Because I'm anxious to see the knot. Oh, there it goes. Here it comes. Look at that. Let me keep pushing. It's best to push it through the back side. Here it comes. Nice to see the knot. There it is. Now, when I put that together, I'm going to examine that knot. It looks like it's just an overhand knot, possibly, but just in case, I want to tie it the same way. There you go. Here's an old piece of rope from the 1700s. 
Oh, and now we can see the spot really nice. You know, originally when this came in, I couldn't tell how the rope was hooked. You couldn't see that at all when I first took it out of the box. But of course, once we opened it up, I saw the, the knot on the backside. And then, oh yeah, of course. Okay, good. Wow, we get to see something here. Oh, I'm thrilled about this. This is the kind of stuff you don't see unless you're in my position as a restorer where you open the things up. I don't know if you can tell it by the reflection or not, but so that got a little loose once upon a time. This gear goes in here just like that. Okay, it goes in here like that. And over the years it wore a little bit and so somebody had to do some work on it. It fits nice and snug now. But look at what they've done. They've taken a small ball peen hammer, probably smaller than this one, and they have peened all around the hole, pushing that brass inward. To tighten up the hole. And that's how it's done. A lot of locks that way. When you open them up from the back side, you'll see that was done. Okay, now I have to take these guys off. This one and this one. Uh, I don't have to do it right now, but let's see if it will come off. Because I have to make new ones that hold this. They will come across the back and they'll come back and have little feet. So this is held out away from the mantle enough that there can be enough that there can be a pulley right in here, okay? And that pulley will go down down to the to the spit itself to rotate it. The rotisserie. Okay, but so it's gonna to have to come off, and so you're here with me now. Well let's let's take a look. Um, I don't know what's gonna happen. It's steel. The, the, because the other one, you know, the screw was down into brass, steel into brass, and I'm pretty sure that it was gonna let go, it wasn't gonna bind. But these are steel screws into this old wrought iron. The wrought iron will be our friend and not bind to it, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. We have to be very careful. If I can get this to run. Oh, it's moving. Okay, that one's moving. Oh, good, good, that was moving. We got it free. And that and these, these have been on and off and they're not, they're not original, really old stuff. A little messed up. Now, let's see what we can do with this one. That one isn't moving yet. Let's, let's see what else we can do here. Let's try this one. Oh yeah, this one came right right away. No problem. Good, good, good. And this one? There it comes. There it comes. Yeah. Oh, good, good, good. This one. Oh, it doesn't want... <coughs> we better take a look at this. Well, there we see something. Look at how it's, it's all peened over in the back. Uh, I would, I'd never be able to get that. I'm going to have to take and file that smooth. Get this peen over roughness out of it, right? Then it'll probably, then it'll probably let loose. Because once there's nothing, right now that's keeping that from going down through there. So not, it is not going to go. Good thing I didn't try anymore. Look at how they made that. So yeah, there's the chisel marks. Look at how he just chiseled that. There's where the chisel stopped, you know, split it, bent it up. And this one, it's, here's the front side of the chisel. He didn't pay any attention to when he put it on. He just made two of them. One was one way, one was the other. He just threw them on there. But, you know, that's the way it was done. That's the way it was done. But the new one, the new one's going to be really nice. Okay. So I have to get that, I have to get the back side filed. All right, now I have it filed on the back. I filed that, all that off there. All the way clean. Oh, look at I go forward and back a little bit. See, just a little bit's happening. Start tightening. A little bit of movement here. Boy, it's still giving me a hard time, isn't it? Oh. I'm gonna, here's what I have to do. A lot of that. 
might give it a little I might give it a little bit of heat back there and that should let go just a little bit with a burn matic torch and that should let go not much heat I don't discolor anything okay well that ended up being much more difficult than I expected that did not want to give it up at all but we have finally gotten the screw out right here now I, I put heat on the back of it and just really had to heat it heat it heat it and then I really struggled with the screwdriver but one of the things I did real quickly I took a hacksaw and I cut I cut the, the slot of the screw a little deeper because it was kind of worn out in there and gave it a better bite for the screwdriver because I cut the slot a little deeper and cleaned it up so I had a good bite but boy I put everything I had into it and then finally it just little bit by little bit it gave way but here's what I found <laughs> didn't expect this um, there's no threads on it someone had had it off before and they messed up the threads when they put it in and they've stripped all the threads on it so what they did is then they just peened the back side over you know remember I showed you how it was humped up and I had to grind that all level and it didn't make any much difference it made a little bit of a difference but because uh, uh, I never got it through that way <clears throat> but now what I find is basically it was a rivet see and it's mushroomed here at the end where the towards the end where I had ground it it was just in there tight. I could have actually just turned it over, but you didn't know. We thought it had threads, right? I could have turned it over, and uh, if I backed it up on the anvil and just probably punched it out with a with a center punch. But we've got it out now, so all is well. So now let's go ahead. I'm going to clean up all these parts, get the gook and the grime stuff that shouldn't be there off. Clean them up, and. Uh, Let's fix these few little parts uh, and get it mounted and get it spinning, see how it works.